Well, hope people of God, it's good to be with you and to be able to open God's Word together once again this week. And I want to look together at the Gospel of John. So if you would turn with me in John's Gospel to chapter 1, and we'll read the first 18 verses of chapter 1. This is God's own Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from him his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. So this is the, the, the majestic opening beginning of the Gospel of John, probably words very familiar uh, to many of us. And uh, we want to think about this Gospel. Um, we looked at Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and we said that they were synop- the synoptic Gospels. Uh, That description comes from uh, a scholar who basically was using the Greek word synopsis, which means seen together, saying that Matthew, Mark, and Luke tend to tell the same same story uh, in a little bit different ways. So you can can see them together uh, talking about Jesus and his kingdom. Uh, But most scholars have noticed that John follows a little bit different pattern. So he's not one of the gospels that we could see together. Uh, like the other Gospels. He has his own purpose in writing. Uh, This Gospel was written by, as best we can tell, the Apostle John, uh, who is presented to us in Scripture as the son of Zebedee and Salome, um, who is the brother of James. Uh, Now there's other things that are supposed. Some people think that Salome was a sister of the Virgin Mary, which would have made Jesus and uh, James and John cousins. Uh, but we don't know that for sure. That that comes later in the tradition of the church, so we don't we don't know how much weight to put on that. Uh, but certainly, James and and John are part of that intimate circle um, of of disciples that Jesus has. And uh, James and his brother John are known as the sons of thunder. And because James and John are always mentioned um, together that way, probably that means James was the older brother. Um, that. Uh, we are have described to us in in the in the Gospels. Uh, James likely was uh, martyred by under Hera Agrippa in about the year 44 uh, A.D. for the faith. So uh, he dies much earlier than his brother. So the Apostle John is uh, the author. He's referred to as Jesus by one of the sons of as one of the sons of thunder. Um, he's also referred to by the Holy Spirit in his Gospel as the disciple whom Christ loved. Um, If we piece together the details of that were given in the Gospels, John, probably along with Andrew, Peter's brother, uh, were disciples of John the Baptist. And uh, John the Baptist pointed out two disciples and pointed out Jesus to them and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Uh, And Andrew is one of those disciples and goes to Peter to tell him about Jesus. The other disciple is not given a name, so that's what makes us think that that's the Apostle John, who doesn't like to mention himself. Um, but later we find in the Gospels that when John is fishing with his brother James, uh, Jesus calls them to follow him. Um, John is part of the intimate circle of, of Christ's disciples. 
Uh, he's there when uh, Jesus raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. He's there on the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, he's there at the Garden of Gethsemane. He's there at the foot of the cross when Jesus uh, commits uh, the care of Mary, his mother, into John's care. Um, John is in the upper room at Pentecost receiving the Holy Spirit. John goes forth on his missionary work with the Apostle Peter. Uh, John is later exiled to the Isle of Patmos after being uh, involved in the church in Jerusalem and then the church probably in Ephesus before going to Patmos where he receives the revelation that's recorded in the book of the Revelation. So he's responsible for five, writing five books of the Bible, including uh, his gospel. And so this is uh, the author of the gospel. He's recounting to us the Jesus that he knew. Um, it's a little hard to know exactly when John would have written this this gospel. Uh, the best scholars can really only narrow it down to sometime between 55 and 95 AD. Um, some people think it's probably later um, in that time period, so probably closer to the end of the time period rather than to the beginning of the time period, um, but certainly no later than 95 AD. There have been some people have tried to argue it was way after the time of John. That's uh, The best scholarship has shown that that's not true based on manuscripts they found, so probably 95 AD at the latest. Um, but we know that John was a younger disciple and lived a long life, and so um, there's good reason to think that perhaps at the end of uh, his life is 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 when this gospel came out. Um, he's, nota he's notable for the I am statements of Jesus that he records um, in, his, in his gospel account that we don't receive in the other gospels. Uh, and we, many times when we think of Jesus, we hold these, these I am statements dear. So we can think of those I am statements. Jesus said in John 36, 35, I am the bread of life. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Uh, in John 10, verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. Um, in John 10, verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Uh, in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Um, in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Um, and in John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And so John is famous for those I am statements. Uh, we also know why John writes his gospel because he communicates to us very clearly his purpose in writing in John chapter 20 verses 30 and 31 where we read, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Uh, that's, that's John's focus in his gospel, to focus on Jesus, to um, show how Jesus revealed himself to be uh, the incarnate Son of God and the Savior of the world. Um, it's been said that John focuses more on Jesus than on his kingdom, and as the, the revelation of Jesus and who he is unfolds throughout the other gospels, John is clear from the very beginning who Jesus is. <clears throat> he is the incarnate word. He is the son of God. He is the savior of the world. Um, and John means us to know that about him, to know that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one sent of God, that he is the son of God, and that by believing in him, you may have life in his name. Uh, that's why sometimes John is also called, called John the Evangelist. And sometimes when we want to introduce people to uh, the truths of Christianity, sometimes John is where people are told to start because John does such a wonderful job of presenting uh, Jesus and who he is to us. So he is the savior of the world. He is the son of God. He is the one who has come anointed by the father with the Holy Spirit to be our prophet, priest, and king. And there is salvation in no other name. Well, there's no other name given among men by which we must be saved. And when Peter and John went forth and went forth as missionaries teaching the good news of the gospel of Christ. They went as eyewitnesses to what Jesus had done, um, testifying to the truth of who he was. And so in many ways, there's no one who, who knows the mission and work of Jesus better uh, than the Apostle John. Uh, John is, is someone who has the rare privilege of knowing Jesus uh, in his earthly life and seeing a vision and revelation of Jesus in his heavenly life, uh, writing letters to, to the people in the church about the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so 
John has left us a wonderful witness to uh, the Jesus that he knew, the Jesus who loved him, um, and all the mighty works that Jesus did and recorded those things for us so that we might put our faith in Christ, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Uh, so we can be thankful to the Holy Spirit for preserving this gospel uh, that tells us so richly about Jesus, the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Now let's thank God together for this book. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the gospel of John. We thank you how it presents to us so clearly the divinity of your Son, and that he came into the world to save sinners. We thank you for the witness of this disciple whom Jesus loved, uh, who bears testimony to the truth of what Jesus did in his life. We thank you for those precious statements that he has left us, that Christ is the way and the truth and the life, that he is the resurrection and the life, that he is the good shepherd. So many of those precious truths that we cling to in our lives, Lord, we thank you for communicating them to, the, to us. So help us to be thankful, Lord, for this clear witness that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. And may we put our faith and trust in him. Forgive us our sins and grant us our prayers, Lord, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, it's been good to spend this time with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.